the jeweled bag shore from London, England. Jimmy is a sporting gentleman from the golden age of boxing. Jim plays I think virtual reality is probably the most powerful computer tool that we've seen in this bit of the 20th century. It also happens to be an incredible market. Virtual reality will go to the places where there will be money. What's the company worth today? Um, I looked in my uh, newspaper this morning and apparently it's worth seven, uh, 92 million. It may seem surprising, but the current world leader in virtual reality games is a British company called Virtuality, based near Leicester. With VR entertainment set to become a multi-million dollar market, Virtuality is facing stiff competition from the Japanese and American games giants. But despite recent losses, Virtuality's founder, 34-year-old Jonathan Walden, is confident the company can survive. Virtual reality uh, involves the use of uh, advanced computer systems. What you do is you wear a headset on your head where the view that you see is generated by the computer system. Uh, this particular game, Boxer, is a game that um, uh, what it does is allow two people to literally box each other and to do so without actually hurting each other. This is your opportunity of a lifetime, your chance to write... Your really, when you look at virtual reality, and you look at who would adopt virtual reality most quickly, uh, who is interested to explore what virtual reality truly has to offer, one key word keeps coming out, and that's entertainment. Entertainment fundamentally drives the technology more aggressively than any other market. I think the present virtual reality games are very rudimentary. I think the graphics aren't very brilliant. I think the lag times are very difficult. Um, I think the actual games themselves and the quality of the games, when compared to other computer games, just aren't very good. I think it's getting by on novelty and hype at the moment. Good games are totally compelling. They make you want to come back again and again. They're deep, they're extremely subtle, they're deep in content, there's lots of it to go through, and there's lots of variety and differentiation. Uh, they're honed and progressed and tweaked to such an extent that you don't quite make it every time and there's always something to come back to. Uh, if you get a great game, they go on year after year after year. Uh, and then what we call in the industry the silver bullet. Uh, if you create a silver bullet, you only need one or two of those and uh, you're doing pretty good. If you look at what's happened in, in previous technologies where you've got a new product, the people who start the product off, who are in first, generally don't survive. The people who survive, in, in, who survived, for example, in cars, were Fords and Chrysler and Mercedes, but they weren't the people who started. They were the Panhards. And you've never heard of Panhard. They've disappeared now. I'm afraid the same thing could happen to virtuality. Uh, we have Sega, we have Nintendo, we have large American corporations and other Japanese corporations who are putting a lot of money into virtual reality. The odds on virtuality surviving are not great. Firstly, we do have a clear and definite lead in the marketplace. Secondly, we license and we work with possibly those companies that may have otherwise been seen to be potential competition. We have as shareholders Motorola and IBM. We license um, to Sega. We do uh, major development contracts for whole new um, theme park, virtual reality theme parks with MCA uh, or Universal Studios in the United States. We develop environmental projects in uh, Tokyo, in, in, in Nagoya. I think the risk factors in terms of our success are not purely limited to the sorts of machines that we make right now, although they're world leading and we have many technology awards for them. Um, but more in the, the software area, and that will be where the major thrust of our growth will occur worldwide. <laughs>